Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon White version. Last time, we battled against Charon at the foot of Twist Mountain and met up with Alder who gave us the Surf HM. And because whenever we have an HM, the brakes get put on everything, we went around exploring the world seeing what we can get with our new HM. And we're not done yet. This time! There's nothing quite like the atmosphere of Driftvale City on a cold winter's night. I like the colors and the fog that's over everything, the color of the windows that are open, the way that the hail is falling, and of course the sound effect. Can't forget that. I praised that a heck of a lot before. Unfortunately, we got bigger fish to fry, so we're heading out to Route 6, and I'm gonna meet you guys a little bit further to the north. For right by the healing house, this old geezer. Here on Route 6, there's a place called Mastraton Cave. Supposedly deep in a cave, you can find an amazing Pokemon called Kabalion, who is said to have protected Pokemon from a sea of fire in ancient Unova. If you can use a move called Surf and lets you move over the water surface, you can maybe you can see Kabalion. We're gonna follow that tip and go on a bit of an adventure seeing if we can seek out this legend of ancient Unova. Starting off, no there's not an item that you can find in that little square. I thought it was gonna be there because it was the only square that didn't have those tufts of leaves on it. Instead, we wanna go down. And I see, it's gonna be at the end of that non-descriptive dead end, isn't it? Or no, it's not. It's gonna be one space before that, so good thing I was mashing A. Back over to this other nondescript space, we got a big mushroom. I hope that there is a bomb mushroom continuing the line. No, there's no, oh, that's lame. Thought that'd be a cool little detail if there was. We keep on surfing. I really just like this color right here. This water is beautiful. I, I, I've complimented it before, but I really do think that this is the best looking water in the entire Pokemon series. Water in the more recent games look kind of tacky, to be honest with you. A lot of it looks not good and just, well, I don't know, they, they have t textures repeating so often, and you don't have this nice look of water actually looking clear and like it's flowing. They got it right here. Even though the technology was more limited back in these days, they did a lot with a little, and I appreciate it. Here we are, Mistralton Cave. I need Flash. Interrupting myself briefly because back in Driftvale City, there is something that I forgot to grab right down here by the wharf. Is this a wharf? I'm not totally sure. I'm gonna turn on my dowsing machine, nothing hidden around here, but there is a water stone. You know, just in case you wanted to evolve a third Panpour, oh. but it's there if you want it. And besides, that lighthouse is really pretty, especially in the fog like this. I mean, just, well, you can't really look at it from here. Um, can't go under the bridge, but uh, yeah, from here we can kind of stare at the lighthouse. I'm being foiled from having my beautiful sights. Maybe it's for the better that I had to go back, because this item ball that was visible at the bottom of the screen was bothering the bajabbers out of me. Get a, uh, get a silk scarf right there. That raises the power of normal type moves. It is not, in fact, a pink bow. We got any normal type Pokemon that primarily attacks by using return with same type attack bonus. That can be great for it. Now for real. Welcome to Mr. Alton Cave. I was not doing this without Flash. You there? Same one that you used Flash for us last time. Thank you for that. And... Oh, I need strength as well. I am never going to get past the very beginning of this place. I'm eventually not going to be able to make these introductions sound more important every time, so... Welcome to Wellspring Cave. <laughs> All right, somebody had to go over in the team for us to... I didn't bring him with me! <laughs> I accidentally brought Necessity with us, thinking that she was our HM user for some reason. And you want to know the really sad part? I have had to run back and forth between that cave entrance so many times that I am almost out of max repels and felt the need to buy more of them. One of those bring you. Here we are. Finally, we can actually get started. Somebody had to stay behind so that we could have two HM users on us. I left behind Haywire. Little Blitzel, you get to pretend like you actually did get to go with us on the adventure now. We gotta push aside these boulders, so it's a good thing that I did bring it with me because I was think because we don't just need it in order to come back from later in the cave as a shortcut. We do need it to be able to progress at all. I'm gonna take that elixir, and I'm gonna take. I hope you're flying gem, please. Okay, there we are. Rock gem. Well, I 
do want the gem for rock, so it is a little bit accurate, actually. Uh, I do want it for that purpose. Um, there is something that I want to do with the flying gem. I don't want to totally spoil what it is I want to do, but those of you that were around when gems were still used in competitive, you might know. My favorite things are mountains, meals, Pokemon, and fun battles! Uh, if you lived outside of Unova, I think you'd really love eating Larvitars, because that combines all three of your favorite activities. Technically four, if you consider the time that you'd probably have in the bathroom afterward. Drillbur! Hello? I was actually thinking that he'd probably have some Rock-type Pokemon in his team, and I thought we'd try out a new Fighting-type move, but... Okay, this is fine. I am all okay with being able to use Moxie and just get my power up. Besides, Terrified hasn't done a lot of fighting for a while. He was kind of hogging the spotlight there for a good long while, and... We've let the other Pokemon catch up a little bit, so I think it's high time that we do this. Unfortunately for me, I chose to do this in a battle where we're fighting against Fighting-type Pokemon. Please let this one go! Girder is pretty bulky, as I'm seeing right here. Okay. Bulk up. I'm still gonna go for Bulldoze. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, okay, it's not really that bad. I was using Wake Up Slap or anything of that nature, I probably should have been worried. But no, we're good. Give me that second Moxie boost. Man, I just love getting on Power Twist my Pokemon to see. Oh ho ho, you got me! What do you say next? I'm sure you have fun dialogue, as hikers always do. Your team is so strong, but my Pokemon were also good. Weren't they? <laughs> Hikers are so fun. I, I I sincerely hope that there is never a Pokemon game release that doesn't have hikers in it, because they're always the greatest. They've always been the favorite trainer class since the very beginning. I'm chasing my dream, and I'm fighting for a victory. Now that we got our feet on the ground, or foot on the ground, because I'm on my bike, in my case, and we're actually past the front door, let's go over the new encounters that you are able to find inside of the Mistralton Cave. Actually, we only have one new encounter. <laughs> Axu! Oh boy. Let me tell you about this little guy. This is the whole package for a physical sweeper. He's decently viable even in his current state, starting with Dragon Claw Slash and potentially Dragon Dance. Plus, it actually evolves within a few levels of being caught! Hallelujah! <laughs> I said actually again. <laughs> Uh, when it evolves once, it's actually pretty viable for the levels that it's going to be fighting at. When it evolves twice, it's bar none one of the greatest physical attackers ever. 147 attack, 97 speed, Mold Breaker lets it just brute force through abilities that would cause it to do less damage, and no especially bad stats that you would care about. The best part? It learns Swords Dance immediately upon becoming fully evolved. Of course it's a great Pokemon, even calling it that might be an understatement. It might not learn Outrage until completely unreasonable levels, so I wouldn't count on getting that, but it's still greatly viable even without it. Honestly, if you want a strong dragon, I just recommend getting Axu. Don't wait on anything else. Oh, the irony. <laughs> okay, one Max Repel wouldn't get us through the whole dungeon, so maybe I shouldn't be freaking out too much that, oh, I just got a Max Repel, guys, this game hates me, because nah. I'm not that pessimistic. I like to think this game quite likes me. Heck, my luck has been utterly ridiculous throughout this journey up to this point. I would have way too high standards if I was saying that this game hated me. Boggle's doing its thing. We're gonna grab a Hyper Potion. And I just love the fact that, once again, our HM user is a little tiny Dwebble that's able to push boulders way bigger than itself, because it's not even a foot tall, if I'm remembering right. Uh, okay, so that item is hidden down there on that lower level. Okay, it is just up above, all right. Trying to make sure that I am where that I'm, that I, trying to make sure I am where I am and that I'm not somewhere else. Make it sound like I'm on some sort of existential journey for self-discovery when I put it like that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and then down this way, they are just showering us in items, another hard stone. I kind of feel like they're being redundant with the items lately where you don't need two, much less three of a lot of these healing items, but we're just kind of getting them anyway because they don't have much else to give us. <laughs> so that's, I think, the second time that we've gotten a uh, type hold item that we already had access to for a while now. I'll take an iron, though. And since we have Garboder with us, of course I want to give it that. And 
And then, no! Oh no, we didn't have a Hearthstone. Never mind, I guess I was complaining about nothing, but still, it was a little bit silly of them to give us more Mystic Waters. I guess they kind of had to for whether or not, like, to accommodate for people that wouldn't have chosen the same thing for the NPC, so I guess I don't know what I'm talking about whatsoever. At least I'm willing to admit it. Rock slide! Oh boy. I was saying that Ancient Power was kind of burning a hole in our moveset lately. That is... Well, it's not about to change because, uh... Well, actually, yes, it is about to change because it's not going to do anything. Rock Slide is 75 power, 90 accuracy, can make the opponent flinch, uh, which is great as it is, but in double battles, it's even better hitting both opponents. Played a lot in competitive. We can put it on Terabyte, we can put it on Rock, and we can put it on Boggle as well, but I think more than anyone else, I want it on Rock. Even if it is less accurate than Ancient Power, just that higher power is going to be so good on it, and heck, well, uh, actually, no, we can't really put the wide lens on it because of acrobatics if we want to keep that fully powered, but I'm willing to give it a go, and now that we have access to heart scales, I think there is no time like the present to give this move a test drive. Seriously, teach it to at least one of your Pokemon if you can. See if you like having it on your Pokemon, and if you don't, like I said, you got access to heart scales now. I don't need to repeat myself. I'm finally able to get rid of Rock Tomb, have more accuracy and more power. Of course I want that. And with items that great, we still aren't done yet. Moving on to floor three of this place, and uh, it's actually bright. I saw your skill. It's impressive for one so young. Maybe you're the one. Hmm, maybe possible. How about it? Will you listen to an old man's story? In the distant past, when Pokemon and people lived in different worlds, a war between people started an intense fire in a forest where many Pokemon lived. The Pokémon were surrounded by smoke and flames. They were in big trouble. And then the legends Cobalion, Terrakion, and Verizion appeared. Terrakion used its amazing strength to destroy the rocks, blocking the escape route. Verizion used its quick movements to protect Pokémon from looming flames. And Cobalion led the frightened Pokémon out of the burning woods. The people who started the war were routed by the power of the legends. Because of Cobalion, Terrakion, and Verizion, the war was ended. When people fight, there is no peace for Pokémon either. The three legends learn that the deeds of humans could lead to dire consequences for their worlds. They cut themselves off from people and disappeared. No one saw much of them after that, and the three faded into myth. I have been searching for them for decades, and I finally figured out that one of them was deep in this cave. But the legendary three do not trust people. If people approach, they bear their fangs and attack. It can't be helped, because they only knew, know the old world. They still don't know the world became a place where people and Pokemon try to understand and help each other. You seem like you may be, might be able to show them that people and Pokemon can trust each other and live together. If they take another look at people, I think they will stop hiding from us. That's quite a responsibility to have dumped on you out of nowhere, but we will see it through. <laughs> We've got an Ultra Ball. We've got a Dusk Stone. Could have had one of those from the Phenomenon. So maybe it's a little slightly redundant. No, I'm not even going to try to make that argument. I'm not even going to try to save face here. A Rare Candy, and we see... The legendary Pokemon up ahead, right behind this Carbos. <laughs> Good to know that he's in such a remote place that travelers littered with bottles of vitamins. I'm probably gonna give that, I'll give that to Terabyte. And not really much of a strength puzzle, but we have more times that we have to use strength in order to go onward. I'm gonna run into 12 wild Pokemon before I can even get up to it. Of course I'm gonna use the repel, it'll save time. <laughs> Push you down. And this loops back to the way down. Gotta revive. And when you have a legendary Pokemon at the end of a corridor like this, it's a little bit ominous when they're giving you this many items for free. Before moving onward, I am gonna switch Hilbert into the lead role. I think he's who I wanna lead with. As always, before encountering any sort of important Pokemon in the field, I recommend you save.
With impressive bulk, both from stats and its typing, Kabalian is hard to bring down. It has a very clear identity in being faster than most other walls, being quite capable in using mixed attacking movesets, and being able to switch in not only due to its type, but also that ability of Justify that makes it potent out of the gate if a dark move is baited successfully by another team member in addition to it quad resisting it. This is one of only three obtainable Pokemon to have Justified. And speaking of, it's also one of only three obtainable Pokemon to have the move Sacred Sword. This is a 90 power physical fighting type move that ignores the target stat changes. Though many would argue that close combat is a better move for it in Versus, it will be what you are using because it doesn't learn close combat at a reasonable level. Other than that, the only real red flag on it is low special defense, but even then, it's capable of learning both Calm Mind and Sword Dance, further bolstering the fact that Kobalion can do just about anything. I have chosen to not throw any balls at it right away because of course I want to throw a first turn quick ball. It'd be sacrilegious if I didn't. I only got one of them on my side, so let's do it. You'd look great in one because you got the color scheme to back it up. One, two, three! Ah! <laughs> I thought I finally had done it! I thought I finally had a first turn quick ball! Oh my gosh! Oh my, my muscles. My muscles hurt after that. I don't know if I should be ashamed of myself or not. So the reason why I wanted to lead with Helbert is, just quite frankly, it's a good tank. Not gonna have to worry about fighting moves. I can very slowly whittle it down reliably with my Rocky Helmet because it's based on a percentage of his HP, and I don't really have to worry about getting crits if I just wall him with this. I'm gonna do a stockpile. Whenever he's weak enough, we can just kinda switch out. I know Haywire, oh, Haywire could do Wave on it, actually. That might have been good. Maybe I should have run Haywire for this, actually. Uh, well, if I fail to catch it on this run, on my second attempt, I get to run all the way back to Driftvale City yet again! <laughs> okay. Let's see. I don't have a lot of balls, actually. I thought I brought a lot. I thought I just kind of had a lot more from playing normally, but doesn't look like I do. It looked pretty good in an Ultra Ball. We'll try that. Not even a wiggle. Thought you'd have a good fashion sense considering he kinda got that whole uh, that whole trench coat look going on. Not to mention his adorable little shoes. Uh, yeah, Ultra Ball once again. One, two, three! What? Well, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you! I didn't need Haywire after all! <laughs> Look at me! It has the body and heart of steel. Its glare is sufficient to make even an unruly Pokemon obey. <laughs> These Pokemon have not believed in humans for millennia. Well, I sure convinced him rather quickly. <laughs> okay. I guess I'm okay with that. <laughs> Kobalion is ours. It seems that thanks to you, Kobalion has sensed a change in the world. It's a place where people and Pokemon help each other and live together. I believe Kobalion wants to remain with you and travel by your side. The fact that you battled Kobalion and you related to each other should be easily communicated to Terrakian and Verizian because of the close bond between the three. I'm sure they will also give you a chance to prove your worth. The obstacles that separated Terrakian and Verizian from people are probably gone now. Whether you want to search for those two is up to you, but they are definitely waiting for you. <laughs>